training session. I know some of you have uh, done Max before and some of you are new to the process, uh, but we're all new to doing the multidisciplinary assessment committee meetings virtually. So uh, we really appreciate that you're taking the time to participate in this session and <clears throat> absolutely and to serve on our MAC committees. My name is Sandra Zohar. I'm a senior program officer and I'm joined for the session uh, by my co-presenter, Patrick Pilo. Patrick is going to be manning, as he said, an old fashioned word, but he will be taking care of the questions and answers and I will do the presentation. We will try to stop throughout the presentation to give you a chance to ask questions as well as you will be able to to write down your questions. But let me just show you a few features of um, the system. The presentation itself would take about 30 minutes, depending on the number of pauses we will take. Um, and at the end of the session, we will have plenty of time to answer any questions you might have. So please feel free to ask throughout the session, especially when, when we pause, but also um, to write questions down if necessary. Uh, all of you have... Um, uh, have your microphones and videos off. However, the microphones can be unmuted. What we want to bring to your attention is that you have this um, menu at the bottom of your screen uh, that will allow you to see uh, participants. We, you cannot write Q and A's, and I'll explain in a second why. So. We've had, this is the third session that we're running and we've come to, we agree that it is better if we hear your questions rather than have multiple people writing the same query. How do you ask a question? Well, there is a tiny, it is tiny, but it, it exists just above the Q&A bar. There is a small hand raising icon. So if you raise your hand, Patrick is going to see it and will be able to enable your microphone. As I said, I will stop periodically during the presentation to give you a chance to ask questions. And if you don't have questions at that moment and they come up later, we will do that um, at the end of session. We are recording this session as we have recorded the other sessions and we will make those available on our website. So if you ever want a refresh uh, and to listen to this again, you'll have that opportunity and the presentation, the slides themselves, the deck will be available online as well. So what do we want to cover today? We very briefly want to talk about the CFI, about the Canada Foundation for Innovation, give you a bit of information about the 2020 Innovation Fund, talk about the competition objectives, but the focal point of this meeting is to talk about the MAC process itself um, and to uh, give you a, a tour of the CFI online portal of CAMS and how the meeting will take place. We, again, as I said, this is the first time we're doing the MAC meetings virtually, and we'll conclude with a question and answer period. So the Canada Foundation for Innovation, or the CFI, <coughs> were created about 20, almost 25 years ago. And for those who are not familiar with the CFI, our mandate is to invest in research infrastructure, infrastructure meaning research equipment, as well as innovations and construction for laboratories or facilities in which to house the CFI infrastructure. And we fund these uh, at Canadian institutions in areas that are within their research strategies, strategic research priorities. A few things that differ between the CFI and other federal funding organizations in Canada is that we fund institutions, not researchers. So it's the institutions who are the applicants to the CFI. The CFI supports all fields of, dis of pursuit of research. Uh, so health, science, uh, <clears throat> engineering, social sciences, humanities, and the arts. And we support activities across the full spectrum, meaning from fundamental research through to applied research and technology development. We also have um, 
a different funding model. We do not fund 100% of the request. Ours is a 40 cent dollar, meaning that the CFI provides up to 40% of uh, the capital costs of a project, which means, of course, that there is the need for 60% of uh, partner funding. Partner funding are secured through various means, usually, but not exclusively, through uh, the provinces. Most of the provinces in Canada will match the CFI funding, i.e. 40-40, and the additional 20% come from uh, diverse means. They can be institutional <clears throat> investments, they can be uh, deep discounts from suppliers, and other kinds of in-kind contributions. I also wanted to point out that we don't expect matching funds to be secured at the time of application. Institutions that are awarded CFI funding have to secure the funding before we release funds to them. But if, as you read the proposals and you note that uh, funds have not been secured and often will be tens of millions of dollars, don't worry about it. That is part of the, of the CFI process. The CFI, I said, exclusively funds uh, infrastructure rather than operating funds. However, uh, for all CFI funds, there's an automatic allocation of 30% for operating and maintenance support or for o and funds. And we call this the Infrastructure Operating Fund or IOF. And the IOF proportion is 30% of the 40% CFI, so it's 12% of the total costs, which means for some smaller projects is all the funding that they may need for o and but for the larger innovation fund projects, it's likely just a small component of the total funding that they will need for r and and short and long-term sustainability. The Innovation Fund is the CFI's flagship program. It's one of the largest in terms of funding uh, competitions that we conduct on average every two to three years. For this competition, the CFI will invest $400 million in capital funding and the associated $120 million portion for the Infrastructure Operating Fund, the IOF. So the total budget is $520 million. Um, quickly, in terms of stats for the 2020 Innovation Fund, we've received 307 proposals requesting $1.1 billion from the CFI, which if you think about it as a 40% uh, request, the total request is close to $3 billion in total project costs. And we've received proposals from 58 institutions. In terms of distribution, this is quite uh, commonplace in, the, in our large competitions. 27% are from engineering projects, 18% science. Almost half of the projects are from health sciences, 47%. Environmental sciences account for about 6%, and social sciences and humanities account for about 1% of the proposals that we received. The funding rate for um, this competition is going to be 36%. Why do we know it's going to be 36%? It's because we have a funding envelope, so different institutions, depending on their total research grants, are allocated a portion of the total funding envelope of the $400 million times three, so we can by design, know that we can have up to 36% of, um, of the institutions of the proposals or the total request funded, not of the proposals themselves. So there is no guessing what the uh, success rate is going to be, but the funding rate will be 36. Usually the success rate of the max hovers around 31 to 33%. So we're assuming it will be somewhere between 30 to 35%, but that is merely an assumption. So the competition objectives, and I'm going to reiterate these a couple of times throughout this uh, presentation, because these are the assessment criteria, or the, these are the objectives that you will be using in assessing the proposals and in discussing the proposals during the MAC meeting. So there are three key objectives. 
and their lofty ones. They're very important. Uh, the first one is enable global leadership by supporting world-class research or technology development. And this is key. It has to be global leadership. We are looking for class research. We're not looking for it's nice research or okay research or research with some potential. We really are looking, have set the bar at that global leadership and world class. The second objective is to enhance and optimize the capacity of institutions and research communities to conduct the proposed research or technology development programs. That is, are these projects building on existing capacity or commitments to the projects, not just in the purchase and implementation of the projects, but also in their long-term sustainability. And the third objective, which is embedded in all of our programs, is that research that is funded by the kind of Foundation for Innovation is expected to lead to social, health, environmental, and or economic benefits for Canadians. It doesn't have to hit all of the all four, uh, but it has to be of benefits to Canadians. So we have a um, three-stage review process. Uh, the first one is the expert review committees. And the expert review committee phase has almost concluded. Uh, the meetings themselves, we had 92 expert committee meetings. They each reviewed a subset of the proposals that are within similar disciplines and require similar expertise. And using Six assessment criteria, which are research or technology development, team, research capacity, infrastructure, sustainability, and benefits. They looked at the strengths and weaknesses within each criterion, and they uh, rated each criterion, and there is a short report of about four pages written for each proposal. These are available to you to guide the review because yours is a multidisciplinary assessment review rather than the expert one. So as I said, the CFI conducted 92 committee meetings. Those concluded at the end of June, and we've been furiously writing the expert committee reports and finalizing them with our chairs. Uh, most of them are already available to you in our MAC. The province of Quebec conducts a parallel review process, which means that uh, proposals that are submitted by institutions from Quebec that are looking to have matching funds or support from the province, um, they submit their proposals to us, but it is Quebec that reviews the proposals for the expert review phase. They use the same assessment criteria, the same process, and the same report templates. And their review process has recently concluded, and they will provide us with their final reports in a couple of days. I just wanted to say, when we sent you the your review assignments, we noted that there are some from proposals from Quebec and recommended that you wait until we have the responses from Quebec to see if some projects will not proceed to the MAC process. We, kn we know at this point that with the exception of one proposal uh, for MAC number five, all others will proceed to the MAC review. So if you're anxious to get started with your review at the end of this briefing session, all proposals that are within your uh, MAC are ago, whether they're from Quebec or from other uh, from other provinces. The MAC has a very different role than that of the expert committees, in that it assesses proposals based on competition objectives, the three that I've just read out to you. We have 13 multidisciplinary assessment committees. In past years, we had fewer committees, but because of the virtual meetings, we have opted to have more committees on shorter meetings rather than the other way around. Each MAC uh, has six members plus a chair, and the MACs were assembled to review proposals that are of similar complexity and cost, and they're divided basically as follows. We have one big MAC, which means it has proposals that are request, requesting $8 million or more from the CFI. Uh, there is one MAC for small institutions. This is something we instituted as of the 2017 Innovation Fund. Having a MAC 
for smaller institutions and colleges as they have somewhat different realities. And this way, the although the same rigor and standards are held, we assemble a MAC with members that have an understanding of the realities of smaller institutions and colleges. There are eight MACs, so most of the MACs are going to look at projects requesting somewhere between two to eight million dollars from the CFI. And we have three MACs for the smaller proposals that are, are under two million dollars. And if you're one of those MACs, um, you lucked out because the projects under two million dollars are a couple of pages shorter than the other proposals. So each MAC will review about uh, 20 proposals. I think they're almost all equally divided, 19 or 20 proposals per committee. The MACs are asked to do the following. They are asked to rate and evaluate each proposal based on the three competition objectives. The MACs make funding recommendations. It, the expert committees did not make funding recommendations. They assess strengths and weaknesses, but not funding. And it is up to you to recognize the projects that have meet the bar of excellence and uh, should be recommended for funding. And I'm going to talk more later about identifying two proposals that are of exceptional merit that you would like to recognize and potentially promote to the next uh, level of review. So the next stage of review, which will take place in October, is the special MAC. And the reason we have a special multidisciplinary assessment committee is because we believe, and that's, it's been our experience, this is our 11th innovation fund competition, that um, across the 13 MACs, you will identify more projects that are meritorious of funding than our $400 million budget can accommodate. Therefore, the projects that the MACs recommend for funding will be forwarded to the special MAC, and the special MAC will only read the MAC reports, one-page reports based on your discussions and project summaries. They don't see the full proposals. And their role is uh, multifold. It is one, to ensure consistency uh, among the MACs, and with 13, that should be a challenge, and to recommend to the CFI Board of Directors the proposals that most effectively meet the CFI mandate, meet the three ob competition objectives, and represent the most effective portfolio of investments for Canada. Um, <clears throat> so even though we have multiple tiers, there is one common denominator across all stages of review, and that's excellence is the driver. Uh, we have absolutely no political or geographical priorities. We are, are not mandated by the government of Canada to invest more in one area or another. Excellence is the, what is the great equalizer. So based on the projects that are selected for funding by the SMAC. Those funding recommendations are, will be presented to our CFI Board of Directors in um, November 2020, and it is the CFI Board of Directors that will make the final funding decisions, after which our institutions are going to be advised of the funding decisions that were taken by, um, by the CFI and by our multi-level layer and uh, multi-layered review process. I'm going to stop for a second to see if there are any hand raising, if there are any questions about the innovation fund or the or the CFI before we proceed to actually talking about the MAC. I I can't see the if there are any hands raised, but I'm assuming that there aren't. Okay. No, nope, if there's a if anybody wants to raise their hand, uh, we'll give them uh, access to their mic. But at this point, I don't think there's any questions. We're limited. Does that work? Okay. Right. Then I'll continue. This is not the your one and only opportunity to ask a question. So what we want to do is tell, give you some advice on how to delve into the review of the proposals in your Mac, uh, how the meeting itself will be conducted and then uh, post-MAC, which post-MAC is easy for most of you except for the chair. So all the materials for review are 
in on CFI's online portal. It's called CAMS. I think many of you, if not most of you, have already accessed CAMS, but I will give you a quick show and tell on how to navigate across the portal. And it is on this portal that you will find all the proposals for review by your MAC. You will find the expert committee reports associated with each proposal. Uh, and you will find committee documents such as guidelines and a MAC report template that you may wish to use. So the agenda and so on are also available on the portal. For each one of you, you have individual review assignments. And we have assigned three reviewers, three members as reviewers to each proposal, which means that you each have somewhere between nine to 10 proposals for in-depth review, meaning reading the proposal, being familiar with content, reading the extra committee report and being able to uh, discuss it with the committee at the time of the MAC meeting. We don't assign numbers. There isn't first, second, or third reviewer. It's three reviewers, and it will be up to the chair to decide on the order in which the reviews will be assigned. To keep a multidisciplinary assessment perspective, we're not expecting you to have expertise even with one of the proposals. What we're, we try to do is to assign each proposal to somebody who has general expertise. So if it's a health research proposal, we'll assign it to one person who may have health or life sciences background and to some, and to at least one other person who has as far, as far an expertise as possible. We're not looking for you to redo the the review, the expert review, that has already been done and you have the report in front of you. Yours is a higher level review comparing across 20 proposals that are of similar size and looking at the merit from that multidisciplinary lens. We also take into account uh, that there are conflicts of interest. We have tried to identify the conflicts of interest as the, the best of our ability. It, when assigning you to a proposal. If you find that you're in conflict while you're reading a proposal or if, if you find the, that we overlooked one, please let us know as soon as possible because this way we can remove you from uh, having access to that project and especially if we assigned you to review that project, we don't want you to do that and give us a chance to assign it to somebody else. And conflicts can take on different um, different uh, activities. Primarily, we have re uh, removed you if you're from the same institution as the proposal, the applicants. However, you could have different kinds of associations with them. So if you're in conflict, perceived or real, please let us know as soon as possible. So for the assessment of the proposals, as, as we said, the MAC has assesses based on the three competition objectives. Those are, it's not a one-to-one -one rapport. However, those are informed by the six assessment criteria that were used by the exit committees uh, <clears throat> for their assessment. So the first objective, enabling global leadership uh, by supporting world-class research is informed by research or technology development assessment criterion and team. The second objective of enhancing, enhance and optimize capacity of institutions and research communities to conduct the proposed research. That is informed by three criteria, by research capacity, infrastructure, and sustainability. And of course, the benefits correspond to benefits. There is a good correspondence between them, but I sh should flag that in some proposals, there, there is probably some information about infrastructure embedded in the research criterion. Uh, so there could be some overlap and that's okay. You, you don't have to pluck out the information just from the criteria that, that have these association. You can expect that occasionally additional information pertaining to a competition objective may be embedded um, and presented in other criteria. 
we provide you in CAMS with a quick reference guide. I know I use it all the time. I highly recommend that you have it with you. And what it does, it lists the three objectives and the associated um, criteria standards. And it makes it much easier to see what was asked of the applicants, what was asked of the expert committees to assess, and how it feeds into the competition objectives. Now, each, um, each objective should, is also evaluated using a rating scale. So rather than giving a global rating for the proposal, we ask that each of the three objectives be given a rating in addition to recognizing the strengths and weaknesses which in, within each objective. So we have a five-point rating scale, and I think it's important to go through it quickly. Uh, SA is one that you will probably be using a lot. What it means is that the proposal satisfies the objective. As I said, the objective set a very high bar of excellence. And an SA is a very, it means it is world class, it is fully sustainable, all the infrastructure is well rationalized. An SA is the strongest rating you can give, except there is the EX. The EX means doesn't mean excellent, doesn't, doesn't mean extraordinary. It means that the proposal satisfies and significantly exceeds the objective. And to say that a project significantly exceeds the objective, you will need to have a rationale how it exceeded already what is a very high bar for the objective. SW means that the proposal satisfies the objective, but there are some minor weaknesses. We ask that you recognize the weaknesses. Even if you're very enthused by the project, weaknesses should be identified because in the end, we have many shades of excellence and we need to be able to distinguish between the proposals. Uh, partially satisfied denotes that there are lar significant or large weaknesses with the proposal. And not satisfied, um, of course, means that the proposal completely does not satisfy, does not meet uh, the, the bar of excellence, and in fact, it has many major weaknesses. I'm not telling you not to use the not satisfied, but I just wanted to mention for those of you who have served on MAC meetings in the past, that to streamline the review process, we removed from uh, your purview projects that had multiple uh, minor weaknesses or had multiple significant weaknesses. So uh, you, should, you will probably see fewer projects that had uh, a lot of concerns and weaknesses identified by, uh, by the expert committees. Does not mean that you will not, you cannot avail yourself of the full scale, but I just wanted to give you that, perspe that perspective. Just a couple of examples of how you can use it. For example, for ob objective one, uh, to satisfy an SA, applicants must conduct world-class research. If it is world-class research, SA is completely, that's what it should be. If the applicants, however, are the global leaders in this domain, this, this is the international team, the recognized go-to team, an EX and exceeds can be suitable for use for the first objective. For the sub second objective, if the requested infrastructure is well justified, that's our expectation. If it builds on or is complemented by existing research capacity at the institution and the sustainability plans in the short and long term are sound, that would be an essay. It satisfies the objective. However, to exceed the objective, you would have to have particularly strong, well-established partnerships. For example, the team has been working with an industry partner for a number of years, and this partner is going to provide um, training for students, uh, testing for prototypes, and so on. That could be an example of uh, exceeding the criterion. Uh, for benefits, um, we expect all projects ultimately will be of benefits, but what is important is that they recognize benefits beyond um, publications and training students. We expect all research will do that, but if they have strong 
pathways in place. They have identified how they will do the knowledge transfer or technology transfer. They already have a very strong background. Uh, they have had patents and spin off companies and they have uh, the, the links, the partnerships, the support that could be an example of exceeding the criteria and standard. So I'm spending quite a bit of time on this because there's, it takes some time for the committee to calibrate itself and reach an understanding on how to use the ratings. We also ask you not to average ratings. So if, for example, for the first objective, the, the research described satisfies the criterion, it's good research, it's world class, but there's nothing exceptional about it. But the team is absolutely fantastic. Don't, don't say, well, this is an EX and this is an SW, so we'll give him an SA. Look at it globally in terms of meeting the objective standard. Does it meet the objective fully? So I, uh, that was not the best example. For example, the team is amazing, it's EX. There are some weaknesses in the research, so the committee gave it an SW. It should not rise up to be an SA. If there are weaknesses, you should identify them. And um, I'm sure there will be questions about this and we'll be happy to entertain them at the next break, at the next question break. So um, as you complete your assessment, um, we ask you to enter your preliminary assessment and I'll show you in a minute how to do this in CAMS for each objective. We ask you before the meeting to only provide us with your preliminary assessments. You don't have to provide us with your comments. However, if you do have written comments that you're willing to share with us, those are always very much appreciated. If you could email them to us, um, they will help us put together the MAC report that is very much appreciated. In addition to the 9, 10, or 11 proposals to which you were assigned as a reviewer, you also have a reader status for the remaining proposals. Ideally, if time permits, be familiar with the full content of the proposals, but if not, at the very least, please um, be familiar with the content of the expert committee report and the short summary so that you can engage in the committee meet, uh, in the full discussion uh, at the time of the meeting. We have <coughs> some, if there are any reports that were written in French, a French, an English version will be provided. But Patrick, I don't know if any of them were written in French. But no. So you should not, all reports made available to you should be in, uh, should be in English. So, so this is the trickiest part for me <laughs> of this session. Uh, I want to take you on a quick tour of, of CAMS. So can everybody see the, the CAMS portal? Thank you. Okay, so once you sign into CAMS, you've all received the link to CAMS and your um, ID and password if they uh, if you don't have them, if you forgot the, your password, please buy, don't hesitate to contact either your Mac uh, lead or our help desk. And what you will see is an immediate link to your, um, your Mac. If you are serving on multiple committees, perhaps you will see different options, but you're looking for the 2020 IF Mac and there will there must be only one for you to, uh, that you can enter. So what you can see is, first of all, a list of the documents that are available for, to guide your review. This is the, the quick reference guide. As I said, I highly recommend having it with you when you do re the review to give you a reminder of what is being asked for the assessment criteria. Um, the, what the objectives are and how they correspond to the exit committee assessment criteria, uh, the committee membership, the guidelines for reviewers, uh, which we again highly recommend that you read at the very least the sections about what to do before and during the meetings, 
meeting agenda, which right now is probably in draft mode, but should be finalized very shortly. Uh, a report template, again, you don't need to submit it to us. This is for your notes. However, I'm going to pitch this again. If you're willing to share it with your Mac lead, that will be much appreciated. And the reviewer assignments. You can Rather than having to go into camps each time, you can download by going for another project material. You can uh, download by clicking the proposals and Excel Media reports into to your des desktop, so you can have them readily accessible. The only material you will not have access to are ones that you might have a conflict of interest with. So can download the material. The second tab is your review. And your review identifies the projects that were assigned to you as a reviewer rather than reader. And again, you can uh, download these. But what we ask you to do is for each project, you have a dashboard in which we ask you to put the preliminary ratings. So. For each objective, you can choose one of the five ratings. So please don't forget to rate all of them. And most importantly, please don't forget to save, because if you don't save, we will not see it. Once you're happy with your entries, you can submit to the CFI. Once you click Submit, you can no longer change your ratings. It's not a term on condition. If you have a change of heart, and you think, oh, that's not what I want to do, just contact your um, Mac lead and they will be able to make the change for you or um, <clears throat> release it back to you and you can enter the, the, doc, uh, the ratings that you wish to change. The ratings, as a reminder, please, please, please have them to us by September 3rd. Uh, the meetings start on September 9th and the 7th is Labor Day weekend, so there isn't very much time in which to aggregate the preliminary ratings, share them with your chair, and discuss them um, with the chair. So please do that as quickly as possible. Uh, just bring your attention again, once you've entered your ratings, you can download an Excel spreadsheet and view it on your desktop. And And haha. I think this might be a good good stage to uh, stop and see if there are any questions. Yeah, Sandra, there was a question about um uh, will they be able to see their uh, their ratings once they've submitted it? So I don't know, I was busy answering questions. I don't know if you showed that. Um, I didn't see that. And oh. so, yes, you, you can, I believe you can download them after you submit, and those will be your final rating. All right, if you want, I can just, I've got my screen open, maybe I'll show that for a second. Actually, I can do that, that's right. Uh, but on, on top of the page where you enter your scores, where you get all the projects in which you need to enter your score, there's a download button that also allows you to download all your score in one Excel sheet. It's also an option. Was that the only question? It was a question about the timing of the of the download, which I tried to answer in, in text. Maybe it's better if I... <laughs> I do yeah. it verbally. Uh, if you've downloaded already in July, what happens is that we, we have been some of the expert committee reports. So all the proposals were there, but the expert committee reports have been trickling in. So you probably need to log in again, and I suggest probably middle of next week because we'll be uploading the last report, uh, you know, early next week. Uh, if you log in for the last time at the, uh, the uh, maybe middle of next week, then you can download the, some of the expert committee reports that you might be lacking. And this is where you can use a little check boxes to decide what you want to download uh, from the uh, from the interface. You can do that. And I I see there's a question about um, 
you're sharing key timelines, and those are in the my guidelines. But I'm sure if uh, if you ask your Mac lead, they will be happy to share that uh, the key times. And we will. I, I, I will. I will them. convey. I will convey that, that, that information. Okay. Okay. So, speaking of timing, um, we for logistics, technical logistics. Uh, Sandra, sorry. sorry, there. There's a question, Doctor uh, Abu Salem. I will give you. I, I will unmute you for a second. I just need to find you in the list here. Here you go. You should be able to speak. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, just a question. I tried to get that in the chat, but uh, I, I might have missed the response. When when a proposal is funded, finally funded, should we expect that? The funded proposal will be funded to the full amount they asked for, or a portion is a possibility. So uh, that's a great question, Thank and, you. We're gonna, and we're going to come to it in a second. But uh, the the quick answer is the expectation is to fund fully, unless, and I'll tell you the caveats in a minute. So, but that's a very very good question, <laughs> uh, and an important one. Um, so just before we get into the, the MAC process, we, the meetings are going to run over the course of three days, but each MAC is allocated to two days. So we, um, some of them are running nine, September 9, 10, some 10, 11, and some on the 9th and the 11th. So make sure that you know which dates have been blocked in your calendar. The meetings, if you look at the agenda, are for about six and a half hours. I would ask that you allocate maybe seven hours. I know that the time zones are going to be challenging. And again, we can't thank you enough for helping us uh, with this critical review process. Uh, there are a few blocks of uh, breaks, but it's, a, it's going to be an intense day. I think it's going to be fascinating and really interesting, and we know you will enjoy it. But uh, make sure that you have your snacks and your coffee and your water, and uh, be ready for uh, to please and be ready for this. But also please allocate a few more minutes to log in earlier and maybe 20, 30 extra minutes in case we're running uh, over time. The meetings are going to be carried out through WebEx video conferences, not WebEx uh, event such as this one, so you'll have full access, of course, to your uh, video and your, uh, your microphones. Okay, so what happens at the meeting? Again, you have 20 proposals for review, about 10 per day. Um, all proposals are going to be reviewed by the MAC. We've allocated about 25 minutes per review. Some of them, of course, are going to be, uh, will take longer to debate, and some of them will take less time to debate. It will work out, but we think 25 minutes is uh, appropriate, and you will see the, on the preliminary agenda how we have scheduled them. Usually, we just follow the review process uh, by the project number, and uh, so it's mostly a random process. Um, so we, we don't group them in different ways. For each proposal, the MAC will discuss each of the competition criterion in turn. So there'll be a discussion on the first objective, strengths and weaknesses, reach a level of agreement, and then rate it, and then go to the second objective and third objective. As I just mentioned, mentioned some proposals will not require extensive discussion. If there is strong agreement among the committee members, for example, that a project has sufficient weaknesses that you would not recommend it for funding, you don't have to go on at length. And if, especially if you agree with the committee mem members, you can say after five, 10 minutes of discussion, okay, we agree with what they said. We will not recommend this for funding for the same reasons that the committee expert committee identified, and you can stop at that, at that stage. But this will come uh, through some discussion and calibration. There isn't a first, second, or third reviewer. It's up to the chair to call on which reviewer they wish to start, follow, and have the last word. Other committee members can participate in the discussion. We want this to be a committee discussion. And that's why we ask you to also be familiar with the projects that were not assigned to you as a reviewer. 
And <clears throat> ideally, the ratings and key messages will be consensus ones. If there are any discrepancies between your assessment and that of the expert committees, we would ask that you um, have a strong rationale as to why why the MAG felt the project is stronger or weaker than what the experts deemed it to be. So a substantive explanation will be required. Now, given the high quality that we expect of our proposals, and because this is an intense competition, we expect all committees, MAC committees, X committees, but especially MACs to be very selective by recommending funding only for those projects that reach the high, highest caliber. And this way you're also helping the CFI and the next level of review, the SMAC, to make the most efficient and effective investments for the use of CFI funding. At the end of the second day, we ask all MACs to identify up to two proposals that are of exceptional merit. We don't give you guidelines on how to identify these two. And it doesn't have to be two. You can identify no projects. You can identify just one, but you have a maximum of two. What constitutes exceptional will be left up to your committee to determine. Often it is the project that has the X across the board that was considered ex to have exceeded the objectives in every way. But sometimes committees decide, for example, to choose one that perhaps was fully satisfied across the board is a strong proposal, but it is really exciting. It has that wow factor that other projects didn't. So that's really up to you. These projects that are identified as exceptional are invariably, not quite automatically, but invariably they are the first to be approved by the SMAC for funding. So it's a bit like a get out of jail card um, so on one hand, you're helping the SMAC, but you're also um, helping the CFI and helping uh, the project to be to be highlighted beyond the the review and the comments. And so the funding recommendations. We had the question about what do we recommend? There are three possibilities. But we ideally all projects receive full funding. This is for infrastructure funding, and we are not looking to balance the budget by removing an item from here and an item from there. We are operating on the premise that the budget that was requested has been reviewed by the experts. The, this is the instrumentation that is required to conduct the proposed research. Um, so we don't want to hamper a project in any way by uh, removing any items. So the project should be fully funded as often as possible. If the expert committee has identified items that were not properly or fully justified and associated it with a research component that is not strong. It, so if the expert said, if instruments or items two, three, and four are meant to support theme, research theme one, but we wouldn't support that, but everything else holds together very well. Yes, you can have partial funding. If you do recommend partial funding, the expectation is that you will identify the items that will be removed and understand that it will not be of consequence for the world-class project if you had if those items will not be available. You can also have conditional funding. Conditional funding again is a rarity. It's um, not something that we would like to see because conditions are often hard to fulfill and sometimes can take years to fulfill and we don't want to park precious dollars. So we ask that unless it's an it's a reasonable condition, for example, if they are working for, with an international organization, a space agency, and there is a mission in 2021, you can, ask, you can put a condition that, um, that Russia has confirmed that this project will be part of the mission. But again, ideally, either put a fund or no funding recommendation. We also have 66 projects that are multi-institutional projects, meaning that there are at least three 
institutions that have come together to collaborate on a proposal. If they have three independent institutions that are working together, they can request an additional 5% for operating and maintenance, primarily for the management and governance costs associated with multi-institutional complex projects. This is not an automatic allocation. It's up to 5%. It has to be properly rationalized in the sustainability criterion. It was also uh, reviewed by the experts. So the ex experts also should have told you whether they support this or not. And it is up to the MAC to also decide whether this additional O&M allocation is uh, fully justified or not justified. If you can recommend a project for funding and not, just if, uh, and not fund the O&M. It's not a must, and it's up to you to decide if this was properly justified or not. I'm going to quickly go through the, uh, this um, equity, diversity, and inclusion. You will see that many proposals will have a section within the team criterion that provides information on how they used EDI principles and policies of their institution to select the team members. This is the first time that the CFR has introduced the EDI concept to our proposals. And because we did not create particular guidelines, either for submission or for review, we used the 2020 Innovation Fund to seek feedback from the experts on the information that was provided. We are not asking the MAC members to provide us for feedback on each proposal about the EDI in, uh, information that was provided. We ask you not to use it for assessment, so you should not penalize or give brownie points to any project that has more women or fewer women. But at the end of the meeting, during the policy session, if you have feedback at a high level for what you saw or what you would recommend to the CFI to do going forward, we would welcome your, your comments. So uh, we're almost done. Um, before I open to all questions, what, do we, what is the product? of these meetings. Um, the MAC lead, the CFI lead, is going to produce a short report for each of the proposals. These are one-pagers, and those will be vetted by the chairs. Only the chairs will see the MAC report, and we ask them to vet our reports, making sure that the key messages, strengths and weaknesses are in keeping with the the MAC consensus at discussion. And the MAC feedback will focus on whether the proposal met the criterion objectives. Uh, the MAC consensus, so there's a rating for each objective, the comments for each objective, um, justification for the funding recommendation, whether it was full funding, no funding, or possibly partial or conditional, and justifying those one or two projects that you may select for exception, as exceptional, you need to provide us the rationale for that. Uh, the reports for the not, project not recommended for funding are probably going to be much shorter, and if there is full agreement with the excerpt committees, there will probably just be a boilerplate statement explaining the max decision. And uh, just a quick, quick reminder that we know you're across many time zones, but the agendas are in Eastern Daylight Time, and the final agenda will probably be on the MAC portal in a couple of days. So now I, I open the floor to your questions, and we ask that please just raise your hand, and uh, Patrick will enable your microphone. The only thing I can undo with this hand is unraise your hand. So, Dr. Abusalem, if you've got a second question, let me know by unraising your hand first and then raising it back again. Thank you. There we go. I will give you access. Uh, right now, go ahead. Thank you again. So, it is not clear to me whether the written report is required or just nice to have. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll answer that, Sandra. So what's required by September uh, 
3rd, and I know some communities have after September 2nd, but by that date, what's required is your scores. So for the three objectives, you go inside the portal and you enter your scores. That's what we require, and they'll be shared with the, with the chairs before the meeting. Whatever preliminary notes you have, if, uh, if, if you want to share them with the, uh, with the CFI staff responsible for your committee, I'm more than happy to take it. Sometimes it helps with the report writing, but there's certainly no obligation. So I hope that clears it up. Yep. Thank you. Any are other any, questions? Yeah. I, are there any concerns or questions about the virtual meetings, especially for those of you who have been through a, an in-person meeting in Ottawa in years gone by? Well, I think you were very clear, Sandra. There's very few questions, although we did answer a few questions along the way, so it is not totally surprising. So we answered a few questions, and I, the last but really critical piece of information is that you all have uh, a Mac lead, and that person will be able to answer any questions you might have. Uh, this is just an introduction. We ex anticipate that you may have questions as as you start delving into the review process, please at any time uh, email or, or ask for a quick video chat with your lead. And some of us will be on holidays, but all of us are putting somebody in charge to, to um, be a support person for our MAC members because that is the most important thing to us between today and uh, <laughs> um, September 11th. So please, don't hesitate to ask any questions at any time. So there was there was one more question in, in the uh, in the chat or the Q and A, and it's about how will we will allow full discussion at the meeting. Um, <laughs> that's a very good question, and we made sure to ask ourselves that because the format we used to we used in, in prior competitions uh, for the Mac just didn't translate one to one for a remote participation. So what we did is we we're actually going to use a, a cousin of that interface, which allows uh, much very similar to Zoom, if you've done Zoom meetings, right, where you can see everybody, um, and so you see not only their verbal but also some of their nonverbal cues as well, which is obviously very useful. Um, and we've actually restricted the uh, the size of the groups. Uh, we used to have committees with you know 10 to 12 uh, members. Now we've restricted this to six, which makes it much more manageable from a, from a remote perspective. Um, so we've tried to apply as much as possible the best practices that uh, that were learned in years past, and that were uh, we also had a bit of a crash course doing the expert committees in that uh, in that setting over the last few months. So uh, so this is how we're uh, we think we're uh, we're able to to manage that. It will make, as Sandra pointed out earlier, for fairly long meetings. I mean, we still have a lot. It used to be you know two full days of meeting. We've also made the number of proposal review by each committee a little bit smaller, so it's more manageable. Uh, but I mean, it will be probably like a five, five to five and a half hour meeting um, both days. So I mean, these will make for for long, and and you know, let's uh, let's be candid. Probably exhaust <laughs> a little, little little exhausting meetings, but uh, we're pretty confident we can uh, we can uh, go through it, make it. So I think that's it, as Sandra pointed out, if you have any other questions, the, uh, the CFI staff responsible for, for your meeting will be more than happy to answer all of them, I'm sure. So Sandra, for final words. Uh, I, I see more questions, but I don't know if those were individuals already had nope. a chance to ask questions. No, that's uh, I, right. Let me see, I see some comments. I think uh, Edward, he has a question as well, so I will give her access. Yeah. Right, you can go ahead. Oh, thank you. I didn't know how to raise my hand, but anyhow, that's why I have to write it there. So my question is, during the meeting, I, I presume that if you have three reviewers per, uh, per proposal, those three reviewers are going to give it the first pitch and the first opinion on how worthy is the proposal or not. And then you, the chat will open it up to the other people to add comments, right? Right. Correct. Correct. Okay. 
So you are expecting us to read all of it to make sure that we can contribute to all of it. To pay particular attention to the nine or ten that were that were identified for me, for example. So I'm going to answer this because I I used to be the one who always said, oh, they must read it all, and then the shift on the other foot, and I realized, uh, let's be serious. So uh, we we would like to have a full committee discussion, but we realize. You, you will not be able to read these proposals are thick. Uh, but so if you're interested, please read as much of them as you want. But uh, for the ones that you're a reader, not a reviewer, at least read if uh, the um, the project summary is three pages long and the extra committee report is about four or five pages long. So there is a, a shorter way to familiarize yourself with another project. But we also recognize time is limited and do your best. Okay. Thank you, Sandra. So my second question is about the co-financing. So you said the co-financing, it's none of our business and we should not <laughs> manage it, right? <laughs> Sorry, Sandra, because anyhow I think. I let Patrick take that because it's a very it's a very it's a question we've we've had before because you know when we say the CFI only funds forty percent of the project, I can see as a reviewer and I probably would have that reaction myself is okay then if the sixty percent seems a little shaky, you know, we need to take that into consideration. And and while technically that's true, um in, in the in the federal system in Canada, the provinces uh actually are quite involved in this co-financing with the CFI. So in most instances, I would say uh, they will match, as Sandra mentioned earlier, they will match the CFI contributions. So that means that 80% of the project is really pretty secure. So it's very rare that we have issues with the finance, mm -hmm. finances and how they're, how they're set up. It might happen. I'm not saying it's never an issue. But I'm saying it's, a, it's fairly rare that we run into these uh, these. Uh, um, Problematics. I mean, for very large projects, for instance, leaving even the 20% might be multiple millions. Then, you know, maybe that becomes an issue for smaller projects. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I guess the S come. It's posed by the chairs of the 13. Oh, the S Mac. I call it come now. Yep. S Mac. <laughs> it's it's composed by the 13 chairs of the individual max. Is that, uh, I'm, I'm taking a lot of assumption here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, this is a model we had tried uh, at the very beginning uh, of the CFI, and we actually moved away from this. So it will be a, a completely independent committee from, from all the 13 max. Um, but I mean, from experience, uh, they will really look at projects that are on the margin of being funded. I think the, the projects, you know, that Cast with flying colors that are obviously uh, the, the best ones. Don't worry, They'll, those will get funded. Uh, their job is really to look at the margin and see which of those projects near the bubble, if you will, which ones are more, uh, fit better with the CFI mandate and the competition objectives. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Right, I've got a comment here from my, my colleague who was also on the call and says to confirm that the uh, make sure that the center pointed out at the very at the very end of the meeting that uh, all the agendas will give you the starting time as the East can do like saving time here in North America. So you know it's uh, just to, uh, to make sure you do, you do the conversion, uh, which might be a little uh, a little different for uh, for everyone, obviously. Is, did Dr. Nielsen ask a question? Um, yes, I yes. If that was the case. Maybe that was sent directly to you, Sandra, which is also possible. Oh, oh no, actually, you're right. Uh, yeah, can you confirm that we need to leave the virtual meeting and proposal that we have a conflict of interest is being discussed? Um, yes, we will. So usually, in most cases, when uh, we've made the agenda up 
and you know we might do some refining as Sandra said right now they're only in, in, uh, in draft mode but when we made the agendas we tried to group uh, projects where there's a conflict of interest with a with a member or another so that for example if you're in conflict of interest with three proposals we normally have tried to put these three proposals together in a block and we will ask you to uh, to leave the meeting for that duration um, the rationale behind it is, is twofold I mean one it, it protects the process, right? Nobody can say that uh, you know, there were some interventions, even if we ask you not to talk, it, it's cleaner for one. Um, but also it protects the member, because if everybody, anybody goes to you and say, oh, how was the review of my project? Well, I wasn't there. <laughs> and there's nothing I can tell, right? So it's sort of a, of a protection on both sides for this, but yes, we will be asking people to, uh, to leave momentarily. So we'll, we'll find a way to be in touch with you when we're ready to, to come back. And, and hopefully, if we manage to do it in the agenda, it will be at a break. And you know, we've tried as much as possible to do that with the agendas, but it's not always possible, obviously. That's it. Maybe we'll leave a few minutes to see if uh, if there's another uh, question in the Q and A. Uh, Well, if there are no more questions, or if you think of, we'll we'll stay on for a few more minutes in case there are more questions. But thank you very much for attending this session. Uh, we hope you find these proposals fascinating and the Mac uh, review really interesting. I've been saying that to a couple of people who have recently joined our Macs, and we run a Mac uh, survey at the end of each competition. And I'm not lying; over 90% of our Mac members say that give provided that they have the time, they would like to serve on committees again. So we know you've, people find these very interesting exercises and uh, very interesting committees, and I hope we hope you will too. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending. It looks like uh, we've run out of questions, so thanks so much, Patrick. Right. It looks like we have only six fires left on the line. I'm going to depart as well. Thanks so much. And uh, I'll, I won't see you again today just to give you a break. <laughs> Take care.